that you have found the uh, proceeding interesting and that now you have a little bit under, better understanding about what it is I do as an artist and where I come from. As I mentioned earlier, the show was quite controversial. You will now see some of the newspaper clippings and also some of the uh, videotapes from the uh, newscast on that show. When in Las Vegas attending the opening, uh, a group of us sat around and we tried to figure out ways of hyping the show so we could get better attendance. Uh, most of the things that we came up with would have probably gotten me thrown in jail. However, little did we know that lurking out there was going to be in a few weeks an unattended four-year-old uh, uh, who was left there by his mother. The mother became irate when the child screamed and the rest is kind of history. Uh, no one could have planned it this way. It uh, ended up good for myself, for the gallery, the attendants, and everyone involved. Now, you'll see some of the tapes on that. It's unlikely you've ever seen Barbie quite like this. For purposes of art, Barbie appears in this exhibit dismembered and naked, her head and extremities displayed separate from her torso. The artist is John Michael Dodig. He brings his work here from Southern California. This piece here is called Sorrow, but this one over here with a Barbie doll chained to a cross is entitled Martyr Syndrome. State Assemblyman Jerry Fairchild says his son ran screaming out of the room when he saw the exhibit. We have R ratings and RPG ratings in the movies that don't show this kind of stuff, and yet the little kids are allowed to come in here and see this, and I think that's wrong. Fairchild wants the display taken out of the Charleston Heights Art Center. He and several other legislators marched into the center asking that it be removed. Charleston Heights supervisor Patricia Harris contends this is art and will stay. There's always the possibility with artwork that there's going to be someone that disapproves. That's what's given art and art history. It's great history. Every artist, you know, it has a right to be seen. And uh, to censor this would be just like being in Nazi Germany, burning books. Well, I think it's kind of weird that they did this to me. Just for every dollar. The artist describes his work as highly complex and says he has chosen to explore the minds and emotions of the everyday individual. He has succeeded in touching the minds and emotions of at least these few visitors. It is startling, John Michael Dodig's controversial representation of what he considers the most basic concepts of life and the emotions that accompany them. Dodig maintains the unclothed and beheaded Barbie dolls throughout the exhibit represent individuals as they battle the inner conflicts of life and death success and failure. The artist himself recognizes that some who view his work will see it as what he calls a terrifying psychological earthquake. That is exactly how some lawmakers see it. They arrived at the Charleston Heights Arts Center and within minutes demanded it be closed. Their protest prompted by a small child's fear. And this afternoon my wife came down here with my four-year-old and my seven-year-old child. My four-year-old happened to wander in here, saw this, and ran out of here screaming. Those who find the exhibit offensive admit it is not their responsibility to determine what is and what is not art, but insist it is their right to determine what art will be displayed in a public building. This can be available in private museums, it can be, or private galleries, so we're not censoring anything. This, I mean, we're, this is a public building for public use, and we do have the right to determine what's going to go in a public building. Dodig's exhibit was purposely picked for its bizarre style. We have been encouraged by the art community, and especially by the State Arts Council to do more avant-garde exhibits. Um, this certainly fits within that realm. The center has no intention of ending the exhibit before its final scheduled day of August 22nd, but the lawmakers insist they will see it shut down. Tommy Joe Taylor, Eyewitness News 8. Are these bound and gag Barbies art or awful? That question will be left up to you. Despite protests from some lawmakers, the galleries decided to leave up these sculptures until the exhibit's scheduled closing next Thursday. A sign will go up outside asking parents to go with their children when they see this show. The 
problem for the gallery is that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. While people are upset about headless Barbie dolls, you probably couldn't find many who'd worry too much about this headless woman sitting right here on the Las Vegas Strip. The gallery's directors say if a show pleases the public, it'll often disappoint the art community and vice versa. So they try to bring in diverse exhibits each year. And we do 12 to 13 shows a year in this gallery, and we try to make sure we have a little bit of everything. We have traditional, we have the avant-garde, we have sculpture, we have paintings. We try to make sure that we are giving an overall view of the art um, that people will see out in any community in these galleries. The gallery directors screen artists work from around the country before shows come here. But they say you can also ask for a certain artist to be put on display. If someone out there feels that they don't see the kind of artwork they want in here, there is something they can do about it? Right. They can come and talk to us about it, and we'll try to find an exhibit that they might like. The gallery says it expects to have other uproars over selections in the future, but they say they don't think this is that bad. We're happy that people are interested in calling and anxious to come in and see what has uh, caused the controversy. At the the Charleston Heights Library, Teresa Luce, News 3. And why doesn't Barbie have a head? John Michael Dodig says he's a surrealistic artist. The purpose of his artwork, he claims, is to get in contact with people on a one-to-one -one basis. He says his art reflects the need for man to get in touch with his everyday emotions. Dodig says just as we have mirrors to reflect external images, we should also have an avenue to explore what is going on inside the mind. Barbie doesn't have a head because now she can think. We've given her the opportunity to think and to view and observe, just like the little eyeball in there, uh, so it can look back at you. And so the Barbie can, rather than always being made up and being in someone else's image, she now can create her own image and do what she wants to do. Dodig says it's too bad Assemblyman Fairchild and other lawmakers want to close his exhibit because of its controversial nature. While lawmakers call his artwork trash, Dodig says they should clean up the city's trash before they start criticizing others. Vegas isn't the prettiest town in the world. I think that my art, when it came into the city, uh, added something to the city. Uh, one person or one group shouldn't dictate to everyone. I'll let everyone come out and make the decision. If they don't want to go, well, I'll hire a parking lot up there or someplace, and uh, we'll have it there. Doug Bradford, Eyewitness News 8. Oh, well, it's a little weird, but I like it. <laughs> It's nice, it's, the art is pretty disgusting, but I sort of like that stuff. These children like it, but a group of lawmakers spearheaded by Assemblyman Jerry Fairchild definitely does not. They find John Michael Dodig's sculptures offensive and unfit for children. That's why they've demanded the exhibit be torn down. The doors to the exhibit remain open, but now you will find on them a sign that says children are not permitted without their parents, and parents are encouraged to look at the display before they bring their children to see it. The sign may prevent some children from viewing the montage of beheaded naked Barbie dolls, but Assemblyman Fairchild says that's not enough. Uh, a sign isn't going to do it. I think we ought to just close it up, close up the show. It's no longer a matter of the quality of the art or what the art is about. It's about censorship. Um, the artwork at, is very technically excellent work. Whether you like it or not is your choice. And every patron who walks through this doorway's choice. And they have a right to that choice. But unfortunately, this is now um, an issue of censorship. I think when you start going out and telling private enterprise that you can't display these uh, art objects, I think that's censorship. But when you're dealing with the public taxpayer dollars, no, I think we should be able to dictate what we're putting on display. The exhibit is scheduled to show until August 22nd, but lawmakers are threatening to withhold funds at next year's legislative session if it does. In addition, Fairchild says individual donors to the Art Center are being asked to withdraw their support. Tommy Joe Taylor, Eyewitness News 8. Thank God for screaming four-year-olds and politicians, right? If you've liked what you've seen, and would like to see more of it, uh, feel free to call me at my studio anytime and we could set up an appointment. If that's not possible, then I have a number of shows coming up. 
Uh, maybe you could attend one of those. Uh, I'll give you that schedule now. Uh, through September 29th, I'm at the James Turcott Gallery. I have a one-man show there, and that lasts through September 29th. On October 6th, I open up for two months at the Bolero Restaurant and Gallery in Woodland Hills, California. Uh, that will actually be two separate shows. On October 20th, I have a one-man show opening up at the Glendale Community College in Glendale, California. From November 14th through January 4th, I've done some special pieces for a group show at the Morgan Gallery in Kansas City, Missouri. Starting off in 1986, I go to uh, Stevensville, Texas, uh, to Tarleton State University for a three-man show. I follow that with a one-man show at the Coyote Gallery uh, at Butte College in Oroville, California from February 4th through the 27th. Following that, uh, you can see my work at the Palos Verdes Arts Center's Collector's Gallery. That will be a one-man show from March 7th through April 7th. And the last on my schedule is a one-man show at, this is a difficult one to pronounce, the Chemeketa Community College in Salem, Oregon, and that show is in April of 1986. Uh, I would again like to thank you for your time, your interest, and I hope that uh, some way this tape has brought you a little bit closer to my art and hopefully to all art. Again, thank you.